Hello friends, welcome to the lecture series on basics of microgreens. Now this lecture would give you an overview on the microgreens and its health, health benefits. Well, this would also serve you as a guide for those who are health conscious growers as well as the budding entrepreneurs, right? So let's look at what the microgreens are and what is the differentiation between the sprouts and the microgreens, right? Now, um, in the industry, usually sprouts and microgreens are commonly called as microgreens. But scientifically, we should know what is the difference between the sprouts and the microgreens. So, what is sprouting and what are sprouts and microgreens? Now, sprouting is a practice of germinating seeds. Now you can see the seeds over here, right? Now, the whole process of germinating these seeds to a stage where they can actually be consumed are called a sprout, okay? Now, <clears throat> the sprouting can be for all kinds of seeds, all the way from leafy greens to legumes to the whole grains to nuts and different kinds of seeds. Now, these seeds that you see on your screen are actually dormant in nature. They are brought to life when you soak them in water and give them optimal moisture conditions. Now, when these two things are there, these dorm dormant seeds get life in them, right? Now, to germinate, these seeds do not require sunlight. So now, if you think about it, Seeds are designed to start their life under the soil, in the dark. So, to sprout, the seeds do not need sunlight, do not need additional nutrients. They are actually using the nutrients which are stored in the seed itself. Right? So, now all you have to do is give the seed the water and the moisture that it needs to germinate. Once you do that, the seeds germinate within a period of two to seven days or four to seven days, depending upon the seed and the plant species that you're using, and they sprout. Now, as a consumer, depending upon your taste, depending upon your preferences, you can either eat the leaves, the stem, or the roots as well or a complete sprout as well again it depends on species that you would be growing for sprouting again all seeds would sprout but not all plants are to be eaten as sprouts be careful on that one some of them are toxic at the sprouting stage so as a grower and a consumer again you should take precautions in terms of which plant are you growing and to what stage? Yeah, I think this should be very clear in terms of laying the base as to what sprouts are, right? Now, let's look at what microgreens are, okay? So when we have covered the sprouts, the first question that comes to our mind is, what are microgreens, right? Now, microgreens, as you see on the screen, are essentially a sprout that is harvested typically between 10 to 20 days. Now, if you have looked at sprouts, they usually take around four to seven days, right? So the stage of microgreen is beyond the sprouting. Okay, that's very critical. So microgreens are young sprouts that keep growing for a week or two longer, but in different conditions. This is going to be critical in terms of understanding what is the difference between microgreens and sprouts. Microgreens, they need water, they need moisture, they need sunlight or any kind of light, whether it may be sunlight or it could be artificial lights as well. They also need soil or they need substrates which are used in different kinds of hydroponic systems. So here the differentiation point for the microgreens and the sprouts is that sprouts only need water and moisture. Beyond that, for the microgreens, they need the light, the soil, and the nutrients, right? Now, 
the sunlight that is needed for by these microgreens is for the photosynthesis process okay now when you're looking at the photosynthesis process happening in the microgreens they would definitely need nutrients so that they can built up their food system within the plant okay that's the reason why the soil or the substrate comes in building up these microgreens okay now microgreens are larger than sprouts but smaller than baby greens in some cases they are also referred to as baby greens okay now <clears throat> the nutritional density of these microgreens is definitely higher as compared to the sprouts we will look into the different different nutritional densities of different species in a while now but get this correct scientifically speaking a microgreen does not become a microgreen unless its true leaves are developed okay i'm repeating again scientifically speaking a microgreen does not become a microgreen unless its true leaves are developed now let me explain do you see these four pictures on the right side of your screen correct let's look at the first one which says cotyledons now this is a typical sprout that you are looking at what are cotyledons cotyledons are basically the two halves of the seed which on getting right moisture and water they develop into green leaves right now these are called as cotyledon leaves okay now this is a typical sprout that you're looking at a sprout when it goes beyond the 7 days to probably 10 or 20 days right a week or two more than sprout it starts to have true leaves that are appearing now look at the one next to the cotyledon which is true leaves appear now the apex of these two cotyledon leaves you see small two leaves emerging now these are called as true leaves these true leaves are the ones which would have the highest nutritional density which gives you the boost or has the highest punch in it okay now so there are two sets of leaves the first set is the cotyledon leaves and the second set is the true leaves so for sprouts you have the first set but for the microgreens you need to have the two sets okay the first one as well as the second one the third picture that you see these are the cotyledon leaves and then the extension where the stem actually grows and the true leaves are coming out okay and the fourth one is basically the comparison that you look at this is the sprout and this is a microgreen all right now the question is in some microgreens that is a slight um pain point as to whether to call them sprouts or whether to call them microgreens right there are certain reasons behind that we are going to be looking at that as well now just take an example radish microgreen right radish microgreen can be eaten as sprout can be eaten as micro microgreens as well okay now this radish microgreen the whole sprout including the roots can be consumed and that happens in case of microgreens as well so you can actually consume all plant parts the leaves the stem and the root as well again it depends on the preference of the consumer or the grower that is actually growing this microgreens okay now there are different microgreens uh, that are commercially available or you can actually try growing at home as well the most common varieties include the pea shoots the sunflower the buckwheat lettuce and the radish okay now what we are going to be looking at is there are different kinds of sprouts and microgreens okay so we are going to be looking at couple of uh, the major groups but before that how do you navigate among them which ones should you eat well as many things in life variety is always the key so to make sure you get all the benefits of these sprouts or the microgreens or the baby greens you can actually pick and choose from five different groups the first group that you're looking at is the super shoots 
Now, this is the biggest punch of nutrients that you're looking at. Best in nutrition. Sunflower microgreens, the pea shoes, the buckwheat lettuce, and wheatgrass are some of these examples, right? These are the best in terms of overall nutrition that you're looking at. Meaning, they contain balanced amount of amino acids, vitamins, minerals. These are my absolute favorite, I tell you, okay? Now, the first example that you're looking at is the sunflower microgreens, very high in terms of minerals and vitamins. Pea shoots, similarly very high in terms of amino acids. Actually, pea shoots have higher protein content as well. So microgreens are not, not only providing you the vitamins, the minerals, the amino, as, uh, the amino acids, but it's a complete package of nutrition that you're looking at, right? Now, the pea shoots, right? They are packed with foliate and antioxidants as well. They're perfect salad garnish. Okay. Another important thing of these pea shoots is it's actually a good thing that they can regrow after you cut them. So the first harvest, once you germinate the seeds, you let them grow to the microgreen stage, you cut them, they will regrow again. And likewise, you can have three growing cycles of these microgreens without even letting to have the seeds sown again and again, right? So that's the beauty of having the pea shoots. The next example is the buckwheat lettuce. Now these are often consumed to eliminate the cholesterol levels. A small amount of these actually go a very long way. The next one is the wheatgrass. I'm pretty sure that all of you know what wheatgrass is, right? Now, this is also an important example, right? It is the ultimate whole food that you're looking at. Abundant in chlorophyll, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, all the things necessary for human nutrition. It's so potent that people usually have a very small shot of this wheatgrass microgreen and it is bursting with life, right? So the next one, the next major group that you're looking at is the leafy green sprouts. Now, these include alfalfa, broccoli, radish, fenugreek, clover, and many more to come. Now, out of which the broccoli and the radish are consumed for their anti-cancer properties. In broccoli microgreen, there is a nutrient which is called as the sulforaphane. Now, it has anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, and antimicrobial properties. Right now, most of the microgreens which belong to the brassica family, they have anti-cancer properties in them. Amazing, isn't it? So let's move to the third group, which is called as the sprouted legumes. Now these include the beans, the peas, and the lentils. Okay. Now. These, this, this third group that you're looking at, the sprouted legumes, the nice thing about this is that they take, take less than two days to sprout and they're ready to eat. So quick turnaround period for your nutrition boost. The fourth group that you're looking at is the sprouted greens. These include the amaranth, the spelt, the millet, the quinoa, and the teff. Now these are all alkalinizing greens. The fifth group that you're looking at is the sprouted seeds and nuts. This group is a perfect fit fix to get your essential fatty acids and amino acids. These include the almonds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds and the pumpkin seeds. Now look at the complete package of microgreens that you're looking at, bursting with nutrition. Imagine if you just have half a cup of these microgreens on a daily basis. Very healthy, right? All right. So now the questions. What are the health benefits of these microgreens? Right? We have just looked at a few examples that of the four groups. But what's beyond that? Right? So what we are looking at is the microgreens are 
mainly consumed for two reasons. One, they remove the toxins. And second, they maximize the nutritional value. Okay. So, why do you want to grow these sprouts and microgreens? Is the question that you need to answer. Uh, could be as a grower or could be as a consumer. So, the plant species is going to be important. What kind of nutritional benefits are you looking at is going to be important. And what kind of toxins are you targeting to be removed from these plants or the seeds is going to be important as well. Okay. Now, these seeds, now just take an example that you're looking at. These are lentil seeds. Okay. The this picture is the raw unsprouted lentil seeds that you're looking at, which is higher in lectins. The second picture is actually the sprouted lentils. These lentils have reduced lectins and have four times higher vitamin C as well. And this happens through the process of growing these microgreens, germinating these lentil seeds to a stage where they can reach to a microgreen stage. Right now, what happens? These seeds, you soak them in water. Okay. Now, once you soak them in water, the soaking actually reduces the toxic substances within these seeds. Now, you would ask me, why are there toxic substances in the seeds? Well, this is an evolutionary strategy for seed survival. These toxins, they protect the seeds from being eaten by bacteria, the fungus and different animals. All right. Just like you have an immune system. The seeds have the immune system, so-called as toxins. Okay. Now, these microgreens or the sprouts, they, they, they are at the peak of their nutritional value. They actually jumpstart your metabolic activity by providing the big, big punch of the nutrients. They are enzyme rich as well. So imagine these enzymes actually help in pre-digesting the complex nutrients and help the body assimilate them, right? Many of them have asked me a question. How many cups of a full-grown radish would I have to eat to get the equal nutrition of a cup of radish sprout? Now, this is a very intelligent question or I would say a tricky question as well. Because the answer is completely, it depends on nutrients, right? Now, how many cups of these radish sprouts do I have to consume uh, to make up to the nutrition for the mature radish? Let's look at the numbers, but these are in terms of volume, okay? Now, for vitamin A, I have to consume only one cup of radish sprouts, which is going to be equivalent of 19 cups of mature radish. Imagine the burst of nutrients that one cup of radish sprout has. For monosaturated fatty acids, one cup of radish sprouts is equal to eight cups of mature radish. Magnesium, one cup is equal to one and a half cups. Now this is in terms of volume, but what happens in terms of quantity that you're looking at right now if you're looking at 100 grams of radish sprout right in comparison to the 100 grams of mature radish it actually contains four times four four and a half times more concentrated magnesium 45 times more concentrated monosaturated fatty acids and 56 times more vitamin a as compared to the counterpart guys this is fabulous Imagine the nutrient load that you are actually putting in through just one cup daily, right? No wonder the whole world is actually looking at microgreens and the nutritional benefits at this point of time, okay? Now, so let's, let's recap on the microgreens before we actually go into the specific health benefits of these microgreens, okay? Now, microgreens, they have a very high nutritional density. They need sun, could be natural sunlight or 
they could be artificial lights as well they are grown under led lights as well why is it needed because they have to undergo the process which is called as photosynthesis and that's where the chlorophyll comes in which is good for human beings as well after you consume them they have enhanced nutritional profile now these nutritional profiles of these microgreens can be modulated can be manipulated by using artificial lights and by modulating the cultivation practices as well the growers actually come up with their own recipe for growing these microgreens so that the consumer you guys can actually get the benefit of the whole growing recipe through enhanced professional uh, nutritional profiles now harvesting methods also determine the nutritional value every microgreen has to be harvested in a certain way there are reasons because it affects the metabolic activity of these microgreens moreover some of the microgreen species are actually allowing you to have multiple harvest as well so let's look at the first example that we're going to be um, dealing with the red cabbage now this is i call it as the king of microgreens it's got the biggest punch of all the microgreens right now when you compare the red cabbage microgreens and the red cabbage mature uh, for consumption purposes you're looking at six times more vitamin c in the microgreens as compared to the mature cabbage 20 times more lutein and zeaxanthin now this lutein and zeaxanthin is actually um has implications on skin health and eye eye health as well it's got 40 times more vitamin e and guess what red cabbage microgreens have 260 times more beta carotene can you guys imagine this loads of nutrients in here well this is not coming from anywhere in the space okay what is the whole base for this research was done in 2012 you look at the source now these guys have done an amazing work in terms of studying 25 commercially available sprouts and microgreens they have looked at the nutrition as compared to their fully grown counterparts as well okay so microgreen that takes home the cake is this red cabbage the numbers are absolutely impressive i would highly recommend all of you to act to download this research article read it look at the benefits scientifically proven okay now so the question comes in if these microgreens have so many benefits can i can 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 you just tell me which microgreens are good source of nutrients there are so many species that we are looking at right so can i just have a list from you as to which are the good source of nutrients and as a consumer or grower i would focus on that well difficult to come out with a list so let's look at the nutritional benefits first and which are the ones that are in the top four or five for that particular nutrition the first example that we're going to be looking at is the vitamin c now vitamin c is needed for boosting your immune system all right take an example of covid 19 now all doctors and the health promotion board is actually telling you that all individuals need to enhance their immune system now this happens through higher intake of vitamin c it also helps in cardiovascular diseases eye diseases prenatal problems among other things as well right so vitamin c is important for human nutrition and the top four for providing you this highest amount of vitamin c again the red cabbage the carnet amaranth the china rose radish and the opal basil now these are superpower of for vitamin c and they have higher concentrations of vitamin c in comparison to broccoli as well which is considered as one of the best for vitamin c okay 
Next nutrient that we're going to be looking at is the carotenoids. Now carotenoids are, have a major role in reducing cancer risks. They are also implicated, the lutein and the zeaxanthin actually have shown positive uh, effects on skin health as well as eye diseases. Okay, now these microgreens, the red sorrel, cilantro, red cabbage again and peppercress are even superior to your carrots which have got higher beta, beta carotene. But imagine these four are the best for the beta carotene that you guys need. Next one that you're looking at is the vitamin K. Now vitamin K is actually um, has implications, positive implications in terms of bone health and blood disorders. Best examples, garnet amaranth, red sorrel, green basil and pea tendrils. The new one comes in here. Now, retrospective, look at the microgreens which have been repeated in terms of vitamin C, in terms of um, carotenoids and now again for vitamin K. You have very few targets that you're looking at. If you sit down and zoom on, you can definitely come up with a recipe for just one or two microgreens, which will provide you a complete source of nutrients that you need. The next source of nutrients that you're looking at is vitamin E. Vitamin E has positive effects on your skin health, your eye health, as well as immune system. Four good examples, green daikon radish, cilantro, my favorite, peppercress, and opal radish. Now these four are again superior to spinach. Wow. Actually, wow. So many nutrients, so many benefits of these sprouts and the microgreens. Amazing, isn't it? So, why are we looking at these microgreens all of a sudden? It's not all of a sudden. These microgreens have been used in Asian culinary for ages now. It is just for past two, three years, it has gotten the commercial importance because of its nutritional assessment. Now, I'm going to wrap up the talk by talking about the microgreens rel rev uh, relevance to food security. Now, Singapore government has announced a 30 by 30 mission. Now, this 30 by 30 mission is to develop the capability and the capacity of our agri-food industry to locally produce 30% of Singapore's nutritional need by 2030. Okay, understand 30% of the nutritional needs by 2030 and hence it is 30 by 30. Now, where is this nutritional needs going to be coming in for the Singapore citizens or for the consumers in a whole? Well, what you're looking at is from the fruits and vegetables and the protein source. Right, So they are looking at 30% of the nutritional needs should be coming from the local farms in Singapore by 2030. And what's more do you want? The microgreens is a perfect fit for getting your required nutritional needs in a less span of time. How many weeks do you need to grow these microgreens? Two weeks, maximum three weeks. And there you have your power packed nutritional requirement given to you at your doorstep, in your kitchen, or could be in your office as well. Now, the whole agriculture sector in Singapore is to be transformed, right? By getting highly productive technologies, getting climate resilient plant species or crop species, innovative technologies to be coming in to help the farmers, and most important, all these technologies have to be sustainable, right? So why not? Let's start today, a smaller step. Let's have fun growing these microgreens together. Frankly, guys, 
even a house plant murderer can grow microgreens and reap these benefits of these microgreens if i can grow them so can you okay so i shall stop over here we shall now get connected with the next series coming in soon thank you